This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to tackle a topic that I've noticed popping up quite a bit on Facebook lately, whether it's in the Avid Editors of Facebook page or whether it's on some of the premier pages that I follow, but it's a topic that I've noticed has been getting a lot of attention and that is the workflow from Premiere to Media Composer or from Media Composer back to Premiere, where now we're talking specifically about using AAF exports. Now in this lesson, I wanna show you what the workflow would be from one application to another to show you that even though it's a bit of a bridge, you can very easily get media from one application to the other if you happen to be doing, you know, quite possibly an online in Premiere or an online in Media Composer, and you happen to be offlining in the opposite non-linear editing application. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And you'll see that I have this timeline all set to go to send to Premiere. Nothing too fancy, but I wanted to, you know, if you want to say complicate it up a little bit, just by adding not only the video layer with the clips with the dissolves in it, but adding this picture in picture as well as the title. Now, one thing that I always recommend, we're gonna start, I'm gonna be having a lot of recommendations in this tutorial. First thing that I recommend is that if you know that you're gonna be sending your Media Composer timeline to Premiere or Premiere back to Media Composer, try to stick as much as possible with just cuts and dissolves, nothing too fancy. More so for Premiere editors sending their timelines by AAF to Media Composer, because as you're gonna see, we do have some support issues as far as what is supported in the translation across. And t let me tell you, if you stick with cuts and dissolves, you really can't go wrong. Now, one thing that I also recommend is that when your project is done, not only are you going to send the AAF file and potential media files, but you're also going to send a QuickTime file with video and audio of a reference. It could be just low res H.264 of your Premiere Pro or Media Composer Timeline to the alternating editor. This way they can take that clip, put it onto the topmost video layer and toggle it on and off so they always have a visual reference of exactly what was going on in your brain so that way it looks exactly the way that it should in whichever NLE your project is going to. Okay, so keep that in mind. We'll have a few more recommendations as we go on but like I said, keep that in mind for now. Okay. So let's now talk about getting this timeline out of Media Composer by AAF. Now, a couple ways that we can do this. The first way is in my situation, I'm gonna be sending my timeline to Premiere that's located on my system, has access to my media. Now, this will also work in a situation where maybe you're working in a shared storage situation where you have multiple editors that can all see the same media, even though they're on different workstations, okay? This technique will work for that workflow as well. The other export setting we're going to set up is if you want to take your timeline and send it and the media with it, maybe put it on an external hard drive and send it across the country or even send it across the world. So we're going to set up both of those presets as well. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is right click in the timeline window. I'm going to come down to export. Okay. And we're going to export an AAF file. So we need to create this export setting. Okay, so I'm gonna come into my options and we're going to export this timeline as an AAF. Now, the first thing I always do is make sure that I 
turn on my use marks if it's not turned on also use selected tracks i pretty much have everything here turned on i don't necessarily need the mask margins because this is more of an, an information file as opposed to an actual clip of video okay now for sending this file to a location that can access the media that i can access on my local system or my local network I'm going to want to include all video tracks in my case. I don't have any audio, so I don't need to worry about that. But what we're going to do is simply link to the media. It's going to basically, in the AAF, tell you know Premiere exactly where that media is located on our local system, and it's just going to link to it. Okay, so let's now save this out. I'm just going to say save as. We're going to call this for Premiere link to. Okay, we'll say OK. And what I'm going to do is just save that. And we're just going to cancel out. I'm going to head to my settings here. Because with this export preset, we want to create a duplicate of it to create our other export settings. So let's come over here to cancel. I'm just going to duplicate this export preset. We're going to call this for Premiere Copied Media. Okay. And let's double click on that. And we're going to switch our export method from link to, to appropriately enough, copy all media. We're also going to copy that media onto a folder or into a folder. And we're going to make sure it's the same folder as the AAF file that's going to be going there. Okay. I can now simply say OK. And you'll see now that we have our two export presets, our link to export preset and our copied media export preset. Now, there is something else that's important for me to mention at this step in the game. I have noticed in a lot of testing that I've been doing with this workflow that Premiere in the AAF is very particular about how it likes things set up inside a Media Composer. For example, the Avid DNX HD Media, as far as relinking to, flawless. Haven't had one problem with it. At one point, I did have a ProRes file that I had consolidated, so basically fast imported into the project, that no matter what I did, Premiere did not want to link to that clip. I actually had to go in and relink to it manually. Now, one clip, not that big a deal. A thousand clips, a bit of a big deal. So keep that in mind. Now, one thing I do encourage you to do is that if you end up running into problems with the export method that I'm showing you, you can always use Resolve as an intermediary between Media Composer and Premiere. Now, it's essentially a type of round tripping, except we're going to be going to Resolve from Media Composer, going from Resolve to Premiere. Now, if you'd like to see how that workflow would work, you can check out the tutorial I did on round tripping to Resolve. And instead of coming back to Media Composer, you would essentially be exporting an XML to head on over to Premiere. OK, head on over to the YouTube channel, punch it in the search window resolve, and you'll be able to find that tutorial nice and quick. OK, so let's cancel out of this. Let's make sure we have our link to export selected. We're just going to right click. I'm going to say export, head into the desktop appropriately enough from Media Composer. I'm going to say save, hide out of Media Composer. Let's command and tab or alt and tab for all my Windows friends into Premiere. OK, you'll see I've actually set up a timeline here pretty much a mirror image of what I've got in Media Composer for us to send back from Premiere to Media Composer. But for right now, we don't want to worry about that. Let's just close that up. We're going to right click. We're going to import. We're going to head to the desktop, which we're already located at from Media Composer. Import. Okay. Once these files are imported, you're going to see that not only, and I'm just going to turn off what's on video tracks two and three, not only are our dissolve sent over, super simple, but our picture in picture is also sent over as well. Look at that. And would you believe it? The title is even sent over as well. Now, what's very cool about the title is the fact that I can actually come up to it. I can double click on it and take a look at that. I can now edit it, no problem. So it's not like it's an actual mixed down piece of media. It's a title much like any other title that you're going to create inside of Premiere. So that is very cool. Now, I wish I could say that the path to Media Composer or the road to Media Composer was as smooth as the road we just saw. Unfortunately, it's not. Not as much stuff is supported in the in the you know translation from Premiere to Media Composer only because of the difference in architecture between the two applications. This is why I always say, whether it's Media Composer, whether it's Premiere, always stick with cuts and dissolves. You can do all the fancy titling work when you get to your finishing application of choice. Okay. So let's just, well, let's get organized first here. Let's create a new bin here. We're going to call this from Media Composer appropriately enough. Okay. 
Just gonna select everything here. We'll just drop it in from Media Composer. Very nice. And let's close this timeline here. And let's get our four Media Composer timeline, which is this one here. Very nice. Okay. And let's export it. What we're gonna do is head on up to the File Export drop down here. There we go. We're gonna export an AAF file. Now you'll notice that the AAF export settings window is a little bit scarce in comparison to the Media Composer one. To be honest, this is really more specifically geared to exporting for Pro Tools, or I shouldn't say Pro Tools, it could be Nuendo or an audio finishing suite of your choice. Okay, so in our case, what we want to do is not select anything no mix down video, no breaking out to mono or anything like that. Simply just say OK. Now we're going to go to the desktop. I'm going to change this up a bit just to differentiate it a bit. We'll call this Kevin's timeline from Premiere Pro. Okay, we're going to say save. Okay, there we go. In a matter of seconds, I'm just going to hide out and we're back in Media Composer. But what I need to do is I need to switch projects to a 1080i project because that timeline inside of Premiere is a 1080i timeline. So just give me one second, we'll switch over and I'll be right back. And we are back and we are now in a 1080i project, 1080i5994. We're going to right click, we're gonna say input and we're going to import some media and we're gonna import that AAF file. Now, I'm gonna say open and as soon as I click open, the instant I click it, boom, error right away and everyone sort of throws their hands up, oh, problems already, problems already. No, 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 no problems. This again, much like I said, because the difference in architecture between Premiere and Media Composer, this here is basically telling us, well, hang on a second. Inside of Premiere, we had all of this quote unquote imported media that was already online ready to go, but you don't have that here inside of Media Composer. What do you want to do? Most people would be like, okay, no, let's just, you know, let's stop. Let's not import this. No, no, no. We're going to say yes, because as soon as we do, it's going to bring in the timeline and all of the media associated with it. Okay. Now what we need to do is to relink to that media that we have on our external drives, okay? Now I should also mention before we go on, and I want to give a big shout out to Artbeats and thank them for the use of the footage that we've been using in this tutorial. And don't forget to check them out at artbeats.com, okay? So let's get in some of that Artbeats footage right now. I'm going to come to the source browser because before we can relink to the media, I need to tell Media Composer where it can find the media to link to. So I'm going to come to my Artbeats folder, to the PP folder, and you'll see I got a couple extra clips in here than what I need. I'm just going to bring everything in here. I'll just say link. We'll just link to all that media there. Okay, and you'll see there's my footage. Very nice. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to select all of the media that's associated with this timeline except for the title. Okay. Remember, the title inside of Premiere is a generated piece of media, so no matter what I do, I will not be able to get that title to transfer over from Premiere to Media Composer. So right now, it's just going to be there as a placeholder, okay? But what we're going to do with these clips that I have selected is I'm going to right-click on them, and I'm going to come down to Relink. Now, a couple important things inside of this window that you're going to want to make sure that you have set correctly. First of all, Media on All Drive. That's what we want to check for, all available drives. But importantly... When we come down to relink by, you want to make sure that your source name is not set to be the source name or source file ID, but you want to have it set as the tape name or the source file name. What you also want to make sure is that in the relink to, you don't want it to be video format of current project only. You want it to be any video format. Now, once I'm good to go, I'm simply going to say OK. And in a matter of about, what, two seconds, my media has now been relinked. Let's just look at video track number one. And there we go. Exactly the way it was in Premiere. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that the clip-based parameters inside of Premiere are not supported in the AAF trip from Premiere back to Media Composer. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm just going to come back into Premiere here. And this picture in picture effect was not created with an effect. It was actually created using the clip based parameters that are attached to every clip, not supported in the translation. But one thing that was good is the fact that it actually added that piece of media to my timeline inside of Media Composer. So at least I know what clip goes there. I just have to rebuild the effect myself. And last but certainly not least, I did mention the fact that titles are not supported in the transfer over, but again, the clip was at least placed in my timeline 
And with that QuickTime file with video and audio that I told you you need to be exporting from whichever NLE you're coming from, you're going to be able to drop that onto the topmost layer and get that title rebuilt in a matter of a few minutes. Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you that the path between Media Composer and Premiere and Premiere to Media Composer might have a few bumps on it, but if you stick to the basics and you stick to the original concept of only get in and put cuts and dissolves in your timeline until you're ready to go from one application to another, you're really going to have few to no problems with this process as long as you think it through before you start editing. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.